What's up everyone, my name is Cam. I'm a certified dog nutritionist and founder of The Dog Nutritionist. We are in the kitchen today and we're gonna make a super healthy meal for small dog breeds. But I'm also gonna to talk to you a little bit about uh, small dog breed nutrition, things that you can do to support your small dog and some misconceptions around feeding smaller dogs. Let's get on to the misconception first. We do tend to treat small dogs differently to larger dogs. It's easy to assume that they are different just because of the morphological differences. The reality is small dogs are no different to big dogs. They both evolved from wolves. They both have the same genetic adaptations, but visually, yeah, they're different. What this means is your small dog has evolved to take on a diet higher in meat. In actual fact, slightly higher than that of a large dog. The reason being is they have a shorter gastric emptying time, which means food goes through their system, it leaves their body at a quicker speed, which means they're better suited to a higher bioavailability of nutrients, which are found in meats. Do not mistake your toy poodle, your min pin, or chihuahua for anything different than Canis lupus familiaris. They are evolved to eat raw foods as much as big dogs. They're evolved to eat bones as much as big dogs. You just need to get the size right. Another really important part of small dog diets is the quantity and frequency of feeding. I've worked with many small dogs that have been diagnosed as fussy eaters. But in reality, they're just being given too much food and too many options of when they can eat. If you reduce the frequency of feeding time and you make your dog hungry, then they're way more likely to eat. Also, you've just got to be careful with the quantity of food that you're feeding them because it's so easy to get it slightly wrong because we forget how small they are and we don't want our small dogs to gain weight. We want them to be lean, to protect their joints and obesity we know contributes to so many types of degenerative diseases. Loads of you will be interested in raw feeding your small dog and that makes me extremely happy. Just because your dog is small does not mean they cannot eat raw meaty bones. You just need to get the size right. Periodontal disease is the most common issue that affects dogs and that's because we're not giving them the right things to chew and that's raw meaty bones. I'd recommend a small dog eat maybe one or two wings or chicken feet a week. You can chop the wings up into thirds and what you want to give them is around 100 grams of those raw meaty bones, including the meat, every 500 grams or every pound that they eat. It really is as simple as that. Try and encourage them to chew on it. If that is the case, hold it, they'll get used to it and then that will work to clean their teeth, keep their breath fresh, which is super important. All right, let's get into making the meal. In this recipe, there's gonna be more meat than I'd normally recommend because of that shorter gastric emptying time. We're gonna include approximately 60% muscle meat from the chicken and 25% of the overall meal coming from heart. If you have liver, only 10% can come from the liver because it's too nutrient dense. Chop it all into really small chunks. This lean chicken. So we are also going to have a small allowance for oil to make sure we reach the right quantity of fats. This heart I got, it's like an organic ox heart. It was super cheap. Have a look online, do some research, and you can find ways to feed your dog that are so much cheaper than buying pre-made food. Funnily enough, if you know, you make the food yourself, you save a load of money. And with small dogs, it's so easy to make a big batch of food that lasts a long time. Right, small chunks done. We are gonna now put it all onto a baking tray, spread it out evenly, put this in the oven. 180 degrees Celsius, 15 minutes. Whilst we've got the meat in the oven, we're gonna do the non-meats. And I am going to do a little bit of courgette, really simple, 10% of the total meal. I would normally be steaming some squash right now, but because your dog is smaller and has a greater need for high bioavailability in the ingredients, it's not necessary, so I'm not gonna do it. But if you want to, 
150 grams per kilogram or 150 grams per two pounds. Get the handbook and then the conversions have been done for you. So we got a little bit of courgette in there. And now we're just gonna add maybe an apple or a few berries, it's up to you. Mix it up, see which one your dog actually eats. I would have thought the grated apple would be something that they'd take on more of. Just because it slides into the food a bit easier, you want half the amount of apple as you put in of a vegetable. Mix it all up. We could add a few seeds if you wanted to, uh, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds. You do need to crush them up uh, quite finely so your dog's able to absorb what's inside them. I would recommend around a teaspoon per 500 grams or a teaspoon per pound for small dogs. If you can't be bothered to do that, then I would use my multivitamin supplement. Just put a couple teaspoons in there. It already contains the crushed seeds. It also has some nice herbs and some other functional foods that can support your dog's overall health and keep them barking at those bigger dogs. The meat is done. Now all we have to do is mix the two together. So simple. Get all the juices that are on the foil into the mixing bowl, like so, give it a little shake. Now it's just a case of mixing this all up, portioning it out into some plastic Tupperware boxes. Make sure the food has cooled before you put it into the plastic because we don't want microplastics sinking in to the meal. And that's it. You can store this in the fridge for approximately five days. And then once you've frozen it, if you're gonna put some in the freezer, it will also last for five days once defrosted. And this is looking delicious, simple. We're done.